Hi everyone, this is Ramalinga Prasad Kuppa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Today's topic is buildings and equipment maintenance, routine control for manufacturing process. Appropriate and suitable building infrastructure, facilities and equipment necessary maintenance requirements are discussed in this video let us see the basic requirement ichq7 chapter 4 and 5 are very important for understanding the requirements of process equipment within the building and facilities also hydraulics volume 4 part 2 prescribes the same requirements. These two guidelines are important for equipment maintenance and buildings requirements in pharmaceutical manufacturing. In chapter 4, subsection 4.10 prescribes buildings and facilities used in the manufacture of intermediates and APIs should be located, designed and constructed to facilitate cleaning, maintenance and operations as appropriate to the type and stage of manufacture. Infrastructure should be appropriate for the manufacturing stages. It is important to ensure that the civil infrastructure is suitable to accommodate process equipment and necessary utilities. A uniflow design will help avoiding potential contamination. Coving of floor to wall joints, roof to wall joints help cleaning of facility easily to remove contaminants. A 90 degree joint between the floor and wall would accumulate significant contaminants and make cleaning activity difficult. The buildings and facilities should be maintained free from any damages or cracks. Facilities should also be designed to minimize potential contamination where microbiological specifications have been established for the intermediate or API, facilities should also be designed to limit exposure to objectionable microbiological contaminants as appropriate. Handling of contamination is a serious affair. There should be a clear policy on handling of several processes at a time on the same floor. It is recommended to make sure while charging reactants of one process, the process equipment of the other processes should be kept in closed condition. This will avoid accidental chemical contamination of one product with the other. Control of microbiological contamination should be handled by appropriate controls for supply and return air. HEPA filters are generally used to control microbiological contamination. Water used in the process also should be monitored for microbiological contamination. Subsection 4.11 prescribes buildings and facilities should have adequate space for the orderly placement of equipment and materials to prevent mix-ups and contamination. Section 4.11 intends to have the buildings and facilities to accommodate equipment installed as per the process sequence, overhead tanks and equipment that allow flow of materials by gravity will be installed on the top floor. Reactors will be installed 
half portion on the first floor and the remaining half on the ground floor. Centrifuges will always be firmly fixed, balanced and installed on the ground floor. Centrifuges are high speed equipment. The grouting of the base should be strong load bearing to avoid serious accidents while centrifuge runs. Adequate space among the equipment should be provided to avoid accidental contamination. All these major aspects must be addressed while designing the infrastructure. Subsection 4.13 prescribes the flow of materials and personnel through the buildings and facilities should be designed to prevent mix-ups and contamination. Flow of men and materials in and out of each stage should be handled carefully to avoid contamination. It is a general industry practice to have separate entry and exit facilities for men and materials. But by procedure and practice and an effective system if it can be handled to avoid contamination, same entry and exit systems may be maintained. If the product output are transferred through a closed silo or a conveyor to the next stage, common entry and exit can be justified for men and materials. This is the intent of prescription of section 4.13. Subsection 4.40 says dedicated production areas which can include facilities, air handling equipment and our process equipment should be employed in the production of highly sensitizing materials such as penicillins or cephalosporins. Section 4.40 is specific for highly potent drugs. Very low level contamination of such materials can have significant impact on the other products. The cleaning procedures can be more complex and it is not economical. It is also difficult to achieve the effective cleaning. Subsection 4.42 prescribes appropriate measures should be established and implemented to prevent cross-contamination from personal materials etc. moving from one dedicated area to another. When moving from one dedicated area to the other, care should be taken to protect the product in closed containers to avoid contamination. Also, necessary controls to change the protective apparels as necessary from one dedicated area to the other should be done. This is the prescription in section 4.42. Subsection 4.70 prescribes buildings used in the manufacture of intermediates and APIs should be properly maintained and repaired and kept in a clean condition. This is a common sense requirement. The facilities and equipment should be maintained in a good state of repair as per approved schedules. Appropriate design of the buildings and facilities should include various controls for its intended use and are evaluated at the time of qualification of the facilities. The user requirement specifications commonly referred as URS should have all details of appropriate design suitable for the process. URS should include requirements of open areas, semi-controlled areas, controlled areas and classified areas. All the URS requirements should be translated into technical specifications and each specification should be qualified with objective evidence. Detailed protocols and reports should be part of qualification documentation. Cleaning, sanitization where appropriate and maintenance is a comprehensive activity and not viewed in isolation. Cleaning activity is not just limited to cleaning after each batch 
as a routine housekeeping activity. There should be a detailed system to clean up the facilities with a definite frequency and sanitize as necessary. Fumigation of sterile facility is part of such cleaning activity. So maintenance does not necessarily mean a routine mechanical maintenance to keep the facilities in a state of repair that is in good condition. So maintenance means not just simple maintenance of buildings and facilities in isolation. There is a broader activity to be carried out to establish that the facilities are in good condition. It is the responsibility of the entire production and maintenance team for the upkeep of the buildings and facilities. There is a misunderstanding that the maintenance work is the responsibility of the maintenance department only. In reality, the user is responsible for the upkeep of the facility that is being used by production department. Section 5 totally deals with equipment. After addressing the requirements for facilities, it is now focused on equipment. Subsection 5.10 says, equipment used in the manufacture of intermediates and APIs should be of appropriate design and adequate size and suitably located for its intended use, cleaning, sanitization, where appropriate and maintenance. How to understand this? The equipment should be located, designed and constructed appropriately. The equipment should be in the sequence that process prescribes. The equipment location should be from the early stages of the process to the final isolation stages of the API or intermediate. The intent is to avoid contamination from early stages of the process to the next purified stage. Positioning of equipment also is important. For example, for a reactor, upper half will be on the upper floor of the location and lower half will be accessible from the lower ground floor. This will make the operation easy. Charging of reactants is done in the upper floor and centrifuging of the product is done on the ground floor in a centrifuge. There should be adequate space around the equipment for easy operation and maintenance. To meet the requirement of subsection 5.11, which prescribes equipment should be constructed so that the surfaces that contact raw materials, intermediates or APIs do not alter the quality of the intermediates and APIs beyond the official or other established specifications. Design and construction with suitable material of construction including the volume of the equipment depends on the type of reaction that is proposed in that equipment. For highly acidic reactions, glass lined equipment is required. For alkaline reaction medium, stainless steel equipment may be suitable. There is a requirement to have a brick lined equipment where hydrofluoric acid is used as input material. Volume is decided by the product output. There should be a provision in the maintenance procedures to check the surfaces of the equipment for any wear and tear with an established frequency. This is important. Equipment after a long usage, there is a possibility of wear and tear. This should be checked as part of annual maintenance activity. It is similar to servicing the vehicle for smooth functioning and safe traveling. There should be a provision in the maintenance procedures to establish compliance to subsection 5.12, which prescribes production equipment should only be used within its qualified operating range. Understanding of intent of section 5.12 is not difficult. Obviously, equipment should be used within the qualified operating range. You cannot drive the vehicle at 150 km per hour when it is designed to drive within 100 km per hour. If you try to do so, it may fail. 
that stops your journey there itself. There should be a provision in the procedure to establish the compliance to subsection 5.14 which prescribes any substances associated with the operation of equipment such as lubricants, heating fluids or coolants should not contact intermediates or APIs so as to alter their quality beyond the official or other established specifications. This is important. Lubricants that are used for smooth operation of a gearbox of a shaft should not enter into the product. This would definitely contaminate the product inside the equipment. Also, if there are any minute holes in the circulation coils, there is a possibility of the coolants or heating liquids to enter into the product contaminating the contents of the equipment. It is necessary to maintain the updated copy of the equipment drawings if there were any changes to establish compliance to subsection 5.16 which says a set of current drawings should be maintained for equipment and critical installations, example instrumentation and utility systems. This is necessary to establish that the equipment drawing is current and all the changes made if any are captured in the drawing to reflect the current, current position. This is part of qualification. Section 5.2 is more specific in equipment maintenance programs. Subsection 5.20 clearly prescribes schedules and procedures including assignment of responsibility should be established for the preventive maintenance of equipment. Detailed discussion on maintenance was already done in slide 8. Different tire responsibilities should be assigned. The different tires include mechanical, electrical, civil, etc. The word established means that there should be scientific justification with data for assigning the frequency of maintenance. This is important to understand. How is frequency of preventive maintenance established? It should be based on several factors including vendor's recommendations, usage pattern, performance history, breakdown history, etc. This must be established by a comprehensive risk assessment. Company's preventive maintenance policy may have a provision to carry out risk assessment for establishing the frequency. Calibrations Section 5.3 totally deals with the calibration requirements of equipment and instrumentation. Let us see this section. Calibrations are also part of the maintenance activity to ensure that the instruments connected to the equipment are functioning as expected. Subsection 5.30 prescribes control, weighing, measuring, monitoring and test equipments that is critical for assuring the quality of intermediates or APIs should be calibrated according to written procedures and an established schedule. All controls, weighing equipment, flow measuring equipment, monitoring equipment like online pH meters, temperature gauges, pressure gauges, testing equipment in QC laboratory should be calibrated as justified scientifically. All calibrations have to be done as per approved written procedures and an established schedule. There is no verbal communication in GMP. Everything must be in writing. Subsection 5.31 prescribes equipment calibration should be performed using standards traceable to certified standards if existing. Equipment should be calibrated this way only. A certified standard is the one that was certified by an authorized agency with a certificate of calibration and validity. If existing means that the equipment must be calibrated with established authorized agencies like NIST or NPL or any such other agency which are meant for calibrations. Here 
traceable means to an international certified standard. That means that the certificate must be issued by one of such agencies. 5.32 prescribes records of these calibration should be maintained. This will be the objective evidence of the calibration activity. 5.33 prescribes the current calibration status of the critical equipment should be known and verifiable. This should be established by immediate availability of the valid certificate supported by affixing a label on the equipment with the details of calibration date, next due date, performed by with date and signature. 5.34 prescribes instruments that do not meet the calibration criteria should not be used. Section 5.34 should be interpreted that there should be a status board attached to the equipment that is not in working condition with date from which the equipment was not functional. Necessary supporting documentation on the current status of the equipment should be readily available. Section 5.4 deals with the computerized systems. Subsection 5.44 prescribes written procedures should be available for operation and maintenance of computerized systems. This approach is similar to the other maintenance activities. Many manufacturing processes, testing equipments are operated with computer interface. Hence, it is necessary to have detailed procedures for maintenance and operation. Information technology specialist or trained person must be assigned for such activity. Subsection 5.48 prescribes if system breakdowns or failures would result in permanent loss of records, a backup system should be provided. A means of ensuring data protection should be established for all computerized systems as a, a part of routine maintenance activity. The backup system will support retrieval of data. Since the operations are paper free, it is necessary to ensure that the data generated is not lost. The backup system would have hot backup which is online at the time of operation and a cold backup with a definite frequency capturing all hot backup data. I hope that the information of sections 4 and 5 of ICHQ7 are understood well. Check whether these points are covered in your equipment maintenance and calibration system. You can get same information in subpart C of 21 CFR part 211, 211.42, 211.46, 211.48, 211.50, 211.52, 211.56, 211.58 58 and subpart D of 21 CFR part 2 11.63, 65, 67 and 68. Thanks for watching. For more videos, please do subscribe like and share also please leave a message in comments box for any further support thank you